time for Mr. Pat. It's time to learn with Mr. Pat. He's gonna break down all the facts, like who and where and why is that. So tell us how it works. What's that, Mr. Pat? Hey there, family. I'm super excited today to check out our new table. It's not a table we eat or draw on, though. Uh-uh. This is called the periodic table, and it's a set of rows and columns organized by different chemical elements. 118 elements to be exact. Whoa. The periodic table is important because it tells us about atoms, the smallest unit of matter that is the building block of chemistry. Atoms make up everything in the world, from living creatures like us to inanimate objects like this block. While looking at the periodic table can be a little scary, it has some very basic information that makes it easy to understand. An atom is made of three particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. A proton is a positively charged particle that determines the chemical properties of an atom. This just means that the number of protons tells us what type of atom we have. The number of protons is also called the atomic number and is found right here on the periodic table. Neutrons are particles in an atom that have a neutral charge and are slightly heavier than protons. We can get an idea of how many neutrons are in an atom by looking here at the atomic mass. The atomic mass tells us how much an atom weighs. And while it may not always be exact, we find it by adding the number of protons with the number of neutrons in an atom. Let's take this oxygen atom for an example. We know it has eight protons because its atomic number is eight. Because oxygen's atomic mass is so close to 16, it has to have eight neutrons as well. The periodic table also shows us the symbol and name of an element. But be careful, not all elements are as simple as oxygen. Instead of using the first letter of its name, a sodium atom symbol is Na. And it thought we wouldn't notice. Yeah, right. Both protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus, or center of an atom. Electrons, however, like to hang out in the outer layer. Electrons are negatively charged particles that orbit around the nucleus, creating a negatively charged cloud called an electron cloud. Unlike planets orbiting around the sun, electrons orbit an atom's nucleus by jumping between different spots within the electron cloud. Man, I wish I could move like that. Atoms with the same number of protons and electrons have a neutral charge. But electrons move around so much, they're actually able to transfer from one atom to another in the form of electricity. When this happens, the charge of the atom changes and it becomes an ion. There are two types of ion. A cation, which is an atom with more protons and electrons, making it a positively charged atom. And an anion, which is an atom with more electrons than protons, making it a negatively charged atom. Anions are especially helpful because they purify our air by electrically charging particles that cause allergies. This charge makes those particles stick to different surfaces so they don't float all in our face. Hey, that's pretty cool, anion. Electrons don't always transfer to a different atom, however. Sometimes electrons from two different atoms pair together, causing the atoms to also bond and form a molecule. A molecule is a group of atoms that bond together. One of the most popular molecules is water. Water consists of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Mmm, now that's a refreshing molecule. Atoms also vibrate based on the other atoms around them. This is called molecular vibration, and it can be a bit different depending on the forms atoms take. Atoms found in solid objects like this block are tightly packed together and are unable to move around each other. That's why we can't just walk through something like a wall. Atoms in liquid are packed together as well, but are able to move around each other, which allows them to take shape of whatever we put them in like when we pour the liquid from this cup into this tank. Atoms and gas are not bunched together and move fast. Because of this, it's easy to move things like our hand through the air. These atoms just like to get out the way. Phew, atoms sure can do a lot. 
If you decide to become an atomic physicist, you'll be able to find out even more about this amazing building block of matter. They study everything we need to know about atoms and how they work in the world. Well, family, looks like we made it to the end of our episode. Stay solid. Peace.